Okay. Uh, so we're to our last presentation of this part of the afternoon session. Um, and we're going to hear from Gopi, is it Kafel? Yes, Kafel. Kafel. Um, and uh, he is a postdoc in the Department of Biological Systems Engineering at Washington State University. And uh, we're going to hear about a feasibility study on optical sensing based rapid dairy manure nutrients quantification. Hello, everybody. Thank you for attending my presentation. I am Gopi Kafne from WSU. And today I am presenting the feasibility study for optical <coughs> sensing based uh, rapid nutrient uh, quantification technique. And this optical sensing is generally the near infrared <coughs> sensor, which is popularly used in feed forage uh, nutrient analysis. So we are trying to uh, use this for the manure quantification. So first of all, I would like to uh, talk about why we need this study, uh, or where this study results could be utilized. <coughs> So we have a uh, different commercial manure spreader available in the market and farmers are using. But within this uh, manure spreader, there is a, a lacking of one of the component, uh, that is the nutrient sensing. So either farmer need to take their samples to the laboratory to analyze nitrogen, phosphorus, and other components. And it's time consuming and uh, uh, it might not be uh, accurate as using the sensor. So uh, we thought like, it's not our thought, but it has been used for a long time. Uh, since uh, 1995, they have used some feasibility study just for checking whether we can use in manure or not. In this study, uh, we are trying like, if we want to make a portable sensors, then how uh, what will be the procedure and uh, what we need to do. That is our one step forward than the uh, previous literature. So we can see this is an injection system and this is a, a, a spraying, <coughs> surface spraying system and this is the another system that is popularly used in Washington. So here, uh, the, if there is a manure sensing sensor, an IR sensor, then this can tell us that uh, the manure contains uh, certain percent uh, content of the nitrogen phosphorus and based on the soil requirement we can apply so that it will reduce the water quality problem and as well as control the crop yield issue due to the uh, less application of the manure. So main objective of this uh, our study is like we want to ev evaluate this technology first and then we want to uh, determine the suitable bands, selected bands, some of the bands or the wavelengths uh, based on the, that wavelength uh, 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 small scale or the portable type of NIR sensor can be developed and that can be connected to the manure spreader for uh, real-time monitoring of uh, manure nutrient contents. And another objective was to develop uh, uh, three different models and based on the uh, selected wavelengths, we want to uh, determine which of the model, uh, interface of the model with the system uh, could uh, give us good uh, prediction of the manure nutrients. So for this test, uh, we use the manure samples uh, with the different concentration of total solid, uh, total ammonia nitrogen, orthophosphate, total nitrogen and total phosphorus. And in this study, uh, we uh, to uh, keep the variation in the nitrogen and phosphorus for the better calibration of the model, we try to dilute the sample and prepare more number of the samples. So this is the system that we used uh, for our uh, experiment. This is the uh, near infrared spectroscopy or uh, that has been uh, used for the disease detection in the plants, fruits. Uh, so we adopted the same one to uh, test to the, our system. And uh, it has a fiber, optical fiber, and the 
uh, near infrared radiation from this instrument will be transferred to this fiber and to the menor sample that is on the top of the uh, sensor. So we kept the menor sample inside the pla flat plastic bottle and the polythene bags, Ziploc bags, and we collected the spectra uh, from this menor sample. So our design was like. Uh, we collected the 50 spectra using polythene bag, 50 plastic bottles, and um, uh, these uh, these two data set one and two was used uh, uh, by using collected by using the fresh dairy manure samples, and this data set four was uh, from uh, manure sample from the lagoon manure and solid separated flush manure sample. So among these, uh, to develop the model and the select the spectra, we use the two data sets. And after selecting the wavelength, we validate it uh, with uh, this data set as well as with the data set that was not used to develop the model or the feature selection. So these are the spectra that we obtained, uh, example spectra that we obtained using the near infrared spectroscopy. So with the variation in the manure type, we'll get different spectra and based on the composition of the material, uh, we'll get different peaks. So now our main aim in this study, within the large range of the wavelength, we want to pick the selected wavelength, some of the wavelengths that uh, can predict the manure nutrients. So that uh, now the cost of this instrument is 60,000. When we use whole range of the uh, wavelength, we want to pick some of the wavelengths and build a new sensor that will be portable and uh, affordable to the farmers. Yeah, this, uh, so I would like to explain the band selection uh, and evaluation technique that we use. This is the spectra obtained from the manure samples and we analyze the manure sample, uh, manure contents, uh, nutrient contents using the uh, lab method to calibrate the model. So this is the step that we used for uh, band selection. This band uh, is a typical word used. Uh, in a simple, we can say the wavelength, wavelength selection, and these are the evaluations. So in the second step, after collecting the near infrared spectra and the nutrient concentration of the manure, then uh, using the uh, <coughs> stepwise multilinear regression, we selected the some suitable or the effective wavelengths. This is called a band selection. After this further, we try to reduce uh, the number of the suitable bands using the principal component analysis. And after selecting the bands from principal component analysis, we develop the three different models. Uh, uh, partial least square regression, support vector machine regression, and artificial new neural network regression. And we uh, evaluated all these models using the selected bands from the PCA analysis. And based on the uh, statistical parameters, we determine the best model that will be suitable for the uh, manual nutrients prediction. So the results that we obtain from the uh, selection of the band is from the first step with the SMLR we got these 15 bands and uh, with this band we try to reduce this band using the PCA analysis. So we further reduce to the 10 most suitable bands among the 15. And within uh, these 10 bands also, when the wavelength of the uh, wavelength uh, number increases, then the cost of the instrument increases. So it will always be better if we have lower uh, region bands. So we tried whether among these bands, if we can select the bands that are less than the 1200 nanometer, whether our uh, instrument can predict well or not. So these are the performance results that we obtain when using the uh, selected bands uh, and uh, evaluated with the different models. 
So this is an artificial neural network model. We can see the R square value is greater than 0.95 for all the components of the neutrons. And similarly, another uh, model uh, has also well predicted. Uh, here we can see almost acceptable range uh, prediction we can find from all of the models. But among all the three models, uh, artificial neural network found to be a best <coughs> model uh, for predicting the uh, uh, minor neutrons. So these, uh, these are the some of the examples uh, uh, that I obtained for the artificial neural network. Uh, so we can see the this target is the uh, measured from chemical analysis and this output is the predicted value for the total ammonia nitrogen and this is for the total nitrogen. So here during the building this model uh, among the total data we use 70% of the data for uh, developing the model that is the training the model and for the validation of the model 10% was used among the total data uh, to determine among the developed models uh, which one is best for the prediction. And after that, after knowing that, we utilized 10 20% uh, of the remaining data uh, which was not used in developing the model to uh, verify the uh, uh, prediction uh, efficiency of the model. These are the other results for the orthophosphate and the total phosphorus in the manure nutrients. So based on this, our study, uh, uh, we can make a conclusion that this technology can be well used in manure nutrient determination system. And based on our this preliminary study, we found these 10 bands could be uh, probable for predicting the manure nutrients. And among the three models used, artificial new neural network could be more robust model for the prediction of the manure nutrients. And uh, since uh, we were able to get the almost similar efficiency of prediction when using the uh, bands less than 1200 nanometer, uh, it shows that it could be possible to develop the portable type of sensor far more affordable for predicting the manure nutrients uh, in uh, different manure spreaders. So our future plan is uh, based on this our developed technique for selecting the bands and developing the models. We want to use the larger number of the manure samples collected uh, collect from different farms and uh, validate, validate the obtained selected bands to uh, those manure samples. Uh, last, I would like to acknowledge the BioAct bio program in Washington State University. This was founded by uh, BioAct program, uh, starting fund provided by our university. And we are also thankful to all the farmers, uh, dairy farmers who provided us the manure samples. Thank you very much. All right, some questions or comments? Do, do you have, I, I know you have 10 bands that you came up with, wavelengths there. I mean, do you have an idea or at least a thought as to what one or two or three might, without doing the research, do, do you have any of them that, that seem to, to give you better results now than then, then uh, oh. can you make an estimate right now as to which bands you might want to start selecting to, to look at? Oh, you mean among the 10 bands? Yeah. Uh, so you had 10 bands there. Yeah. That's still a lot of bands to bandwidth to be looking at. I mean, you already made it <coughs> with, with research and things that you've done. Do you have kind of an idea of, of, of what ones of those might be? We're going to start with these and see how well those work. Um. Yeah, that's a good question, but uh, uh, this uh, principle works uh, based on the, um, within the range of the bands, you will get uh, uh, some kind of uh, information from the spectra, and based on that, uh, you will get a prediction results. 
so it is always like prefer you have six to ten bands uh, for predicting the these results uh, for that uh, we can try like statistical analysis just using the certain bands uh, reducing to five number five uh, and check uh, run the models so maybe the prediction results could uh, lower down like uh, I would like to explain that PLSR model in other models uh, SBM model A and N R we cannot see the equations they have already scientists have developed and A and N R is like uh, our neurons in the mind that works like that we will input the parameters so inside component uh, I don't I cannot explain but with the PLSR it works similar with the PCA so there will be certain principal components so each principal component use a certain number of variables like wavelengths so if first uh, principal component with just five wavelengths is giving you uh, more than 0 0.99 uh, 0 0.9 value of prediction then just you can go with five components but other remaining components you might need other components so if you have let's say trace elements of phosphorus or trace levels of phosphorus for example is there a certain band that you think you may pick or which band that you think would really pick out that phosphorus but in other words, which band is more sensitive? Is it more sensitive to that trace? <coughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We are like uh, uh, like tabulating the all bands. There are 15 bands. Yeah, you are right. Now, uh, in our this case, as I have told, this is a preliminary study. We diluted the manure from one farm to make a more number of the samples. So that could be one limitation of this study that uh, it has a high correlation since we diluted the same sample. Uh, so our uh, this future plan I have mentioned here that it is necessary that you collect the manure sample from different farms. They use different feed composition and different things and that might affect um, on the uh, bands suitable for uh, different nutrients. But in this case we found Almost uh, these bands are working for all of the, all of the components. So that is like, if this works fine uh, with uh, other uh, large number of data sets, then it will be very easy and we can uh, reduce the cost of the equipment. Yeah, this is preliminary study and I have collected 80 more samples recently from different farms in the Washington like anaerobic uh, manure samples, lagoon samples, fresh manure samples. So uh, I'll, I will be working on validating uh, using these components and try to select again the new bands then maybe in the next uh, presentations or meetings I might be presenting that. This is just like we want to show that it is possible to make a small sensors that can be connected with the uh, existing nutrient uh, manure fertilizer sprayer uh, so uh, after going in this process we want to contact to the company that makes the NIR sensor using these bands we want to bring that equipment and uh, do test lot of test on that and if it gets success then that will be the final uh, portable instrument can be used in the field one more question. Did you do any spiking experiments with manure? I know that you're saying that you dilute. Did you do any percentage recoveries for spike nitrogen, for example? Spike. Uh, Spiked into the manure sample. Yeah, we diluted the sample using the distilled water, DI water. Yeah, we talking about spiking it with additional nitrogen or phosphorus and oh, see no, if you no. get that recovery. No, we, we didn't use that. And this, uh, like in some of the farms, sometimes they dilute a lot to the manure and sometimes less dilute. So in that farm condition, it might be directly applied. I have seen like when they are spraying, uh, using a sprinkler system, like a water spraying system, they use very diluted manure there. And within the farm, they might have a different uh, total solid concentration manure 
source is same but in lagoon they might have different in other place they might have different source in that place uh, this uh, prediction uh, dilute uh, samples might work better but for as a whole for the farm uh, uh, we recommend that <coughs> it should be tested further with the larger manure sample from the different farms all right let's thank you once more